What's up guys, Kyle Murlai here. Welcome to Unwrap, presented by murphysmagic.com. Hey everybody, hope your Saturday is going well. Hope everything's good, hope you're having a good Saturday. I'm kind of quiet right now because I'm actually in Tennessee working on a few projects with magician Harris III and his beautiful 16 year, six, uh, six month old baby is sleeping in the other room and I'm trying not to wake him up because he has been up all night. So forgive me if I'm a little quiet, but we're gonna get through this and it's gonna be awesome and you're gonna love it. Uh, this week on Unwrapped, uh, I have for you Once Upon a Time by Magic Tao, and it's a trick by Wayne Dobson called Once Upon a Time, and uh, Richard Smith, Richard T. Smith, uh, it's a trick called Numb, and it's produced by Card Shark. So with that being said, let's take a look at a live performance of Numb. Cool. We good? Do it to it. Do it. Okay. So, by the way, I'm in Tennessee, and I'm at the, uh, what, Mc what is it? Uh, McGrary's. I couldn't read it backwards through the window. McGrary's <laughs> Irish Pub. It's totally legit Irish. <laughs> like, they just meet leprechauns and stuff. We're rude. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So a second ago, remember I had a prediction? Blew your mind. Yeah. I have another prediction. I'm all about predictions. You never know. So I have a joker here. Right. On the back of this joker, it's written something. And also, check there's nothing in the box, right? Nada. Nothing in the box, nothing. I'm going to put that in there, OK? okay. And we're going to put that right there. Okay, I'm gonna move your silver a little bit. So we put it right there. So it's in plain view the entire time. I took a deck of cards, uh, all different, all mixed up. It has some smudges, I can't know if you noticed. It's because I wrote in permanent marker and I didn't let it dry, because uh, I'm a dingus like that. So, um, but you can tell, first of all, that they're all random written numbers. I, I think I just did like one to 52, because it fits two cards, you know? So crazy, just random numbers, right? So what I, uh, I need four cards chosen from each suit. So let's go, first of all, name a diamond. Seven and dime. So, seven hearts, seven and diamond. Seven and diamonds, cool. Yep. Name a heart. Hearts, I'll go with three. Three hearts, right there at the top. Name a spade. Eight. Eight uh, spades, and uh, a club. Uh, jack. Jack of, uh, jack of clubs, right? Jack of clubs, cool. So, could have named any card. All different numbers written on the back, right? Um, put these over here. Now, are you good at math at all? Anybody good at math? Anybody? I have a calculator on my phone, so let's pull up the cat, because uh, I'm not good at math at all. Yeah. But I want to have you type this in, okay? Okay. So, uh, random cards, you could have chosen any card. Each card had a different number written on it, right? So the first one is 43, uh, plus 24, plus 16. Alex is in. Plus 32, right? And equal, yep, go ahead. 115. The likelihood of my prediction being 115, that would be pretty epic, am I right? Because you could have named any card of any suit from, and they all had different numbers. Check it out. Go ahead and turn it over. 115, right? I get the party hands, right? But I thought I would take it one step further, because remember earlier I took it a step further? Oh, yeah. You're so awesome. I really am taking the next level. That's because on the back side of the card box, I wrote the exact numbers that you. High five? High fives. Yeah, that was a good one. You made a good noise. You're good at that. Yeah. So that was a live performance of Numb. Uh, you get a, a nice bag that's been kind of crinkled from me traveling, uh, but you get a deck of cards and uh, some printout instructions. Uh, there's no DVD or download, but it's a very simple trick to learn. Uh, and you know, you should read some stuff because reading's fun. Uh, so the trick, if you couldn't tell from the live performance, is a trick where you have a deck of cards with numbers written all over the backs, with different numbers written on the backs. You can show all the faces. Uh, you can even shuffle the cards if you wish. You can show all the backs with different numbers. You have four different spectators, or in the case, in my case, I had one spectator. Name uh, four individual cards, one from each suit. So one heart, one diamond, one club, one spade. You take those cards out. 
you've had a prediction sitting aside the entire time. You turn them over, you add up all the numbers and your prediction matches exactly. And as a kicker, you turn over a secondary prediction or in my case, the back of the card box and written on the card box is um, those four exact numbers that they randomly um, chose. So uh, it's a very cool trick. So and what I love about it is that there's it's a kicker on top of kickers. I'm all about that. And actually, uh, during this review show, both effects are kind of kickers upon kickers. Um, I really, really dig this trick. Uh, if you're familiar with Card Shark's work um, in the past, uh, you might be familiar with certain gimmicks like this because this is um, a trick utilizing a gimmick that they have produced already, um, but in a, in a different way than before. If that makes any sense, I'm trying not. I'm trying to be a little vague, so I don't, you know, expose methods. With that being said, uh, this is very easy to perform, um, very easy to perform, uh, easy to make uh, because you're you're allowed to write the numbers that you wish on the back of them. So you get a blank deck, you have to make it up. It takes a couple minutes. That's it. Uh, super easy to learn, uh, easy to perform. I've said simple, but it's very simple. Uh, so. That's numb. There's really not too much to say. The, I mean, the packaging you get is nice. The cards are good quality um, for, you know, the card shark gimmicks. Um, I think the trick is super impressive. Um, you know, like I said, and here's the one the one thing I like the most about numb compared to some card shark effects is that if you're familiar with card shark's work is that you can't always hand the decks out to be examined. Uh, and if you're familiar, you understand. And what's nice about this, or for example, you would have to do a deck switch from one Phoenix deck to your gimmick Phoenix deck. What's nice about this trick per, per se is that it's okay for you to have a second deck of cards because this card has writing all over it. So you're not gonna use that for all your performances. So yes, this is a, the, you know, the downside is that this is a one trick deck. You know, you can't do, I mean, this is a one trick trick. Uh, so if you want to do other card tricks, you have to bring out another deck. But I think that's fine because, like I said, there's writing on the back of these cards, and that makes sense. It gives it a reason for you have to have a normal deck with you, and you can bring out another gimmick deck or whatever. Um, some people might like that. Some people might not like that. I personally think it's fine in this case. Um, I'm not really a fan of having to do a ton of deck switch or bring around and carry around you know, a ton of different decks. I am a fan of adding one or two gimmicks into a normal deck to make it a gimmick deck and then be able to take those gimmicks in and out. But I think in this case, because it's a gimmick deck, because there's writing on it, perfectly fine to do that. Um, besides that, I really don't have much to say. I think this is a fun, very fooling trick. Like I said, I'm a big fan of pos like a kicker on top of a trick. So I think it's important on Numb and also the other tricks that I'm gonna review once upon a time about emphasizing how impossible a trick is. Because with this trick that I, I performed twice actually at that pub. The first time I got like a very, oh, that's cute reaction. I think the problem was uh, my performance because I didn't emphasize on how incredibly impossible this trick is because they could have picked any cards, they could have named any cards, and only if they named those four cards, which is possible are odds already, only if they named those cards would that number equal to that number plus how did I know. So it's like, it's very important to emphasize that. So. With that being said, that was numb. Now look, let's take a look at a live performance of Once Upon a Time by Wayne Dobson. This, one is, uh, this one's a hands-on thing. So this is actually, you guys are gonna be uh, hands-on. And also, uh, you know, I, I made one prediction a second ago. I'm gonna make it, no, no, you're good. Sorry, oh yeah. So I have another prediction. Uh, this one's uh, just written on a napkin because that's how I roll. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you half the deck. Okay. And uh, what was your name again? Crystal. Crystal, I'm gonna give you half the deck as well. Is that okay? Okay. So uh, what I would like you guys to do is first of all shuffle up the cards, just so you know I didn't mix up. I didn't like specially put the cards in order. Oh, that works it's well. all good. Can you? Uh, yeah, oh, right. shuffling. I had good? No, no, it's, it's cool. We have all been drinking. It's all right. So, uh, so. <laughs> all right. Shuffle. You're in the bed. Okay. So. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, now cut the cards in half. Okay. Cool. Okay. And turn one side of those face up. So one side's face up, one side's face up. Perfect. This is gonna, okay, so so far, real quick, this is all about making sure this is a completely impossible thing. So first of all, you mix, right? right. Now you turned up one half face up. Now to make it even more impossible, you guys are gonna switch face piles. So switch piles. 
So uh, take, take, yep, take that and you take that. Okay, we're gonna get crazy here. And you're gonna mix those cards face up and face down. Mix them face up. Yep, shuffle yep, in any up. way you want. You can riffle shuffle, you can you can overhand shuffle, you know, just give them a good mix. I could be lucky if I could shuffle. Whatever, whatever works, I promise. Okay. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this one and actually I'll have you do it. So hold on to that and uh, we're gonna take these. Mix these ones up face up and face down. Okay. And whatever, you can just give them a good, you know, shuffle, whatever you want. So real quick, while you're shuffling, we're gonna recap. So one, cards were shuffled, right? Cut in half, randomly. Uh -huh. yeah. Shuffled, randomly. You turn one path face up, right? Mm -hmm. Switched, mix them face up, face down. And now you're doing even more. Crazy, crazy like yeah. concept here, right? Yeah. Yep. I don't wanna to touch the deck. So hold the, hold the cards like that. Uh, I have a prediction. Go ahead and uh, my prediction says 25 face up cards, okay? Now, if this even came close, that would be pretty impressive because that was like impossible, right? Yeah. There's so many things on top of each other. Go ahead and, and go through and bring out all the face-up cards. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't know if this one works. Well, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, so we're, we're off on this one, but these were all face down, yeah? Yeah. So if I turn these face up, which I know is not as impressive, uh, but, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 23, 24, 25, 26. But if we take the Joker out, which there was a Joker, so 25, right? So we're, okay. we're getting more impressive here. Okay. So take these real quick. My secondary prediction, if you open it up, is that there's 16 red cards. Here, I'll get these out of the way so you can just count the red cards for me. 1, 2, 3, 4. Exactly 16 cards. My third prediction, though, is that all the cards, all the black cards, will be spades. Go ahead and check. It. Are those all spades? They're not quite. Let me see. Are we off? There's a club. So, but all the other ones. Right, all the other ones are spades. Looks like it. Except for what Except was it? For what, one, a, uh, what, what was it? Uh, so that was pretty close, right? Pretty close. But I actually had one last prediction, and that was the seven of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that one's pretty good. Yeah, that's cute. That one's good. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so that was Once Upon a Time by Wayne Dobson and the Magic Tao. Uh, the trick um, that you saw is. Uh, spectator we cut the cards uh, you can have multiple spectators shuffle those cards they can cut them in half they randomly turn over uh, one pile they randomly switch those piles they randomly shuffle those piles together face up and face down randomly randomly then shuffle those piles of cards randomly then on top of that they count down and I have multiple predictions on top of multiple predictions that match exactly to what they came up with very good trick um, real quick, let's talk about the production. DVD, well produced, well shot, uh, everything about it's fine. Now the trick that you get in the presentation you get is with this little paper book. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like a little book, but really it's just printed out computer paper. It says once upon time, you open it up, it says there was a deck of cards that was shuffled and there are 25 face up cards, which is correct. And that face up pile, there were 16 red cards, which is correct. Um, in that face-up pile, the black cards were all spades. That's un uh, that's not correct, except for the seven of clubs, which ends up being the only club in out of all the spades. Now this, uh, even though it's nicely printed, and even though this fits in a card box uh, with your deck of cards, so it's not gonna get bent up or anything, this, for me personally, is a little cheesy. It's a little not my style. That's just me personally, take it for what it is. But I will say the trick itself, super impressive. I mean, really, and I, you know, I mentioned this earlier with them, really emphasize how impressive this is. And what's nice is that this is completely impromptu. 
Uh, it can be a borrowed deck, it could be a shuffle deck. You can actually just set this up very quickly in front of someone. You could even do it during the process of performing another trick. Uh, the most impressive part though, I think, is that how big, I believe, how big this will play. This could be done in a parlor show even because you have two spectators or a large group of people that is, or even a part of the show. So you have two spectators randomly cut the, you know, they cut the cards and they randomly shuffle. They pass it down, that spectator cuts in half, turns randomly one pile over. They pass that down, those people randomly switch those piles. They pass those down, they randomly shuffle face up, face down, they pass those down, they randomly shuffle together. So it's impossible on top of possible on top of possible. Then I predict it over and over and over again, exactly right with a kicker ending I think it's a super good trick. Uh, I really don't have much to say. This is a short review show this week because both of these effects I think are, are really nice. Uh, I definitely could see myself performing once upon a time very often because now that I've learned it, it's in my repertoire forever because I remember it and it's impromptu and very easy to perform. I think it's really great. Uh, so I really don't have anything bad to say about it. Uh, my only thing is, is like I'm not a big fan of the whole book premise and that printout, but you can write it on a napkin like I did, or you can change it to whatever presentation you would like. Uh, even if you wanted to do with the book method, which could be totally funny. Like you, you can, you know, there could be a totally comedy routine of like a specially printed book that looks old and it says once upon a time, there was this super awesome looking girl in the front row, boom. And then she was with this dude who was wearing, you know, a shirt from the 90s or whatever whatever uh and and you can tell the story but you know you could have it you can make it play big what's great about this is that this plays huge really does um because even though the spectators can't, like the audience can't see the cards after the first couple of rows this spectator can confirm everything i think it's good uh so that's my review of once upon a time it's short and sweet but <laughs> i uh i dig it all right, guys, so that was Unwrapped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you watched Unwrapped before, you know every single week we give away last week's prizes, which was David Regal in the UK and Profiles. And the winner of this week's Unwrapped is Logan Magic 98 Congratulations, Logan. Go to Facebook.com slash Murphy's Magic Supplies. Shoot me a message, and I will get you your prizes out to you. Congratulations. If you would like to win this week's prizes, which were, once again, Numbs and Once Upon a Time, do the exact same thing. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. That is a rule, so you make sure you subscribe. All you have to do is hit a button once, and that's it. And comment below. Tell me what you like and what you didn't like about this week's prizes. You can go in a lengthy detail, a short detail, whatever you would like. Just tell me what you liked, what you didn't really like. It's like the Spice Girl song. What you, tell me what you want. Uh, anywho, so that was Unwrapped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be home for the next Unwrapped. Very excited to be home. Been gone all month. Been lots of fun with the Magic Con. Met a bunch of friends. Been in LA and Tennessee. I'm incredibly tired and I'm excited to go home and see you guys back in my office, back in my house. So I will see you guys there.